So I want to point out to you eight effects that God's Word can have in your life. Romans 10, 17. So then, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Now that is a wonderful scripture, because I lay in hospital for one year on end in the deserts of North Africa with a skin disease that the doctors couldn't heal in that climate. They eventually called it chronic eczema, and actually they really don't have a, heat, a cure for that disease even today. And I had just newly become a Christian, and I kept saying to myself, I know if I had faith, God would heal me. But the next thing I always said was, but I don't have faith. And there I was in what John Bunyan calls the slough of despond, the valley of despair. I don't have faith. And then one day, a brilliant ray of light shone into that dark valley. And it came from Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes. If you don't have it, you can get it. You don't need to stay without it. Faith comes by hearing the Word of God. And faith is coming to many of you even now while you're hearing the Word of God. You know that in the time of the New Testament, the majority of people who, wrote, who read, read out loud, even if they were to themselves. For instance, the Ethiopian eunuch was in his chariot reading the prophet Isaiah, and Philip heard him read, although he was reading to himself. And it's not something to be said about reading out loud. Because when you hear yourself read, faith comes, you see? Number two is, it produces the new birth. It's by the Word of God that we are born again. James chapter 1 and verse 18, speaking of what God says, of His own will, He brought us forth by the Word of truth, that's the Bible, that we might be a kind of first fruits of His creature, of His own will. You know why God did it? Because He decided to do it. We don't get any further explanation than that. And when you get back to the beginning of everything, it all starts with God's decision. God decided to bring forth the people for Himself. And He decided that He would be brought forth by the Word of God, by the Scripture. And that's what brought you and me to know God, to become a new creation, the people of God. It's by the Word of God. And then, once you've been born again, what you need is nourishment. And the marvelous thing is that God's Word has provided suitable nourishment for every stage of spiritual growth. When you're just a little spiritual baby, you need milk. And that's what Peter says in the next chapter of 1 Peter. In verse 2, chapter, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, As newborn babes desire the, the pure milk of the Word, that you may grow thereby. So once you're born again, you should have a very healthy appetite for the Word of God. And there are many of us here tonight, I'm sure, could testify. When we were born again, the one thing we wanted to do was read the Bible. We were born healthy inf infants with a healthy appetite for the one thing that could really nourish us. But then as we grow up, we need things like bread. But we don't need to turn there, Jesus said to Satan, when he tempted him to make st bread out of stones, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So God's word is not only milk, it's also bread. But as we grow up, we need more solid food. And this also is provided in Hebrews chapter 5. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God and you've come to need milk and not solid food. What was the evidence? They couldn't digest more than the very simplest basic truths. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a baby. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age or mature, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You understand? To mature, you have to exercise your senses. You have to practice. You have to apply the Word of God. You have to use it. 
to recognize the situations that you're in, the forces that you're dealing with. That's the way to maturity. If you never really seriously apply the Word of God, if you don't live by the Word of God, you will never become mature. You'll never be able to take more than milk or maybe a little bread. But solid food is only for those who have practice, who have exercised, who have applied the Word diligently, regularly in their lives.